So you want to monetize your Excel, Excel VBA skills. Great. Let's talk about the three seasons, what I call seasons, phases you're going to have to go through if you're going to go full time with your Excel, Excel VBA skills. So I talk about three seasons. The first is hobbyist. The second is part time. The third is full time. So let's talk about each one and the things you should be doing at each stage to move you on to the next stage critically. So if you're a hobbyist, then you have a full-time job, occupation, doing something else, and you're developing a love for Excel. You know, you're loving the functionality. You might be getting into VBA, Power BI, whatever it might be. And then you might be falling in love with the most important thing, which is doing jobs for other people, creating value for other people. So at this stage, you've got to make sure you fall in love with the process. If you don't love the process, you can't move on to the next stage. You can't move on to doing full-time Excel VBA development. So ask yourself, do you really love it? I love Excel, Excel VBA development. There's so many things I love about it. I love the technical challenge. I love the creative challenge, the visual stuff, creating dashboards. I love interacting with clients, understanding what they want, and then trying to create something for them. And for me, that means the stuff I don't like and in business, there's always stuff you don't like, but I can kind of handle that. So ask yourself, are you in love with Excel, Excel VBA development? If you can say yes, I've put together a support file to help you think about how these things might affect you and your career. Link in the description below this video. Go ahead, download the file, complete it. It's going to get you thinking about how you might make money out of Excel and you're doing it on the side, then maybe you're ready to move on to it being a part-time thing. And what's this gonna mean in practical terms? Well, it means you're getting paid to do some Excel projects. And how do you get paid to do Excel projects? Well, you can see the other videos uh, in the series in order to understand how to do that. But at the same time, and this is probably the critically important and difficult thing, you're gonna to have to scale down your current occupation, whatever that might be, in order to create some more room to do part-time VBA Excel development. And this is often the really difficult thing, but if you have some kind of flexible working, I don't know, like there's so many different ways this could work. Could you work four days a week rather than five days a week? Could you work from home to free up that time that you might spend commuting to do Excel VBA development on a part-time basis and then you've got to consider how are you going to manage the relationship with your current employer are you going to be open and transparent that you're looking to move into excel vba development in my case when i first started i got a job at a college here in nottingham as a teaching assistant you know i wasn't trying to follow a teaching career but that allowed me to work two days a week for a bit of money and it allowed me to start my excel vba career in my case, I was totally open and transparent with, with my employers and they kind of bought in to what I was trying to do. And in the end, they ended up as one of my Excel VBA customers. So in my case, that's how I was able to make it happen. But if you are having success on a part-time basis, then it might be time to take the plunge. And at some point, you are gonna have to take that leap of faith. You might not be totally sure you'll be able to make it work long-term, but I think it's worth it because if it does work long-term, it's so satisfying. It's such a great career to have if you can make it work. So what are kind of the key things you're looking for here? Well, if you're in the part-time season, then you're looking to have enough customers to make the business sustainable full-time, including paying yourself a full-time salary, of course. So some things that might really help here are having some passive income streams. And in the other videos in this series, I've spoken about doing online content, for example. A great thing about online content is we can make money without having to deliver the work ourselves. It's a way to achieve scale in the business. So hopefully you've started some online content. You might be able to just monetize that. It could be YouTube revenue if you've had some early YouTube success. It could be setting up some online courses on a platform such as Teachable to sell um, some Excel courses there. But I hope you're enjoying this video series. Here's the five things you can get out of our Members Monday membership. Click join below this video for more. Can you develop some income streams now that are going to support you during the tough times? Because there will be tough times if you're just getting started um, when things aren't going so well. Those passive income streams can be really helpful. And then later, if you're able to scale up the business, those passive income streams can suddenly become 
quite profitable because they're scalable. They don't have a limit to growth. So there's the three seasons that I went through in being an XLV BA developer, a hobbyist to a part-timer to a full-timer. And they're the key things you've got to be thinking about. But the most important thing is, are you really in love with Excel? Do you love the process of XLV BBA development? That's the key question you've got to ask yourself.